Hi all, Bones here from Oz BSA Bantams and, and welcome back. Uh, this episode is going to be all on casting again and the lost foam casting. And what I have is a foam cut out of the head. So I had a mate who's got a CNC router do that. Uh, first go, there are a couple of things wrong with it, but I'll, um, I'll bring you in and show what's wrong with this one, how we're going to fix it, and what I'm going to do in the interim. However, I am going to have a go at Lost Foam Casting, that one, just to see how it goes, and um, I'll explain a, a, a bit later on uh, why I'm actually doing it. So that's our... CNC cut out head. I don't know how far I can bring in before it goes out of focus. So if it's out of focus, my apologies. You'll see it's a little bit furry. So uh, what we've decided to do is get a multi fluted cutter, run it at a lot higher speed, same feed rate and see how we go. But for a test piece, you know, this, this will be absolutely fine. So as you can see here, I've got my hot wire cutter and over there is just a, a hot wire thing for cutting foam and working with foam. So what I'm, what I'm actually get doing is I'm just running that, that wire over there. Geez, don't hit it, you'll break it. Um, just over the furry bits through all the fins. You can see here I pressed a little bit too, too hard, but I'm not... I'm not too bent out of shape because um, we're pretty confident that uh, the next one that we machine up will be pretty good off the tool. But we'll progress this and hopefully um, I'll have a go at casting this tomorrow. So this is this is a bit long and a bit hard to sort of handle with my aging hands, but it's doing the job. It's just taking all the all the all the fur off the fin, so I'll just keep. I'm just making sure I move it pretty quick so I don't cut in like I did there. But anyway, just sort of brushing it. Take the fur off it a bit. And it seems to be working all right. It's leaving a few little ripples where I'm where I'm sort of bouncing. But, oh, well, you know, this is just a test piece and we'll see how we go. Ah, basket. So, just turn that on. So what I'm going to do now is actually, I'm going to cut these edges off and get it back to, a, just get it back and actually expose the, the head. Then I'll put it on its side and I'll run it through and I'll, and I'll shave it off. I don't know whether it's hot enough yet. All right, we're all set to go. That one's a bit thicker. So I'll just, it's got a fair, way, fair bit to cut through. And we'll just take it easy. So I don't snap the wire. So just a cheapy eBay hot wire cutter. Didn't cost much. It's sort of crucial to do what we're doing. Great cut. I'll bring it back after I get it all cut out. Now, I'm a bit tormented about which way I'm gonna set this in the sand. So I'm worried if I set it down like that, when we vibrate the sand, the sand can't get all the way up into the fins. Bloody flies around here today. So I've opted to, I think I'll set it horizontally like that. That way, this centerpiece with a more volume of metal and having a bit thicker here, 
the metal will flow down and out and then fill back up evenly. So it's a nice theory. I don't know whether it's right or not, but anyway, I think that's what we'll do. So I'm gonna make some sprues up um, and we'll do some gluing. Now around, I don't know if you can pick up that line, but this is actually where the sandwich between the two pieces of foam um, were joined. So I have to fill that up, otherwise sand will get in there and we can't have that. All right, we've got it done. So our sprue, um, that'll be where our pour is. Now, if you, are, if you want to know why I've got a dog leg in it, it's so a pouring cup will sit closer to the edge of the drum. So I'm not trying to pour over the top of the drum. It just helps me out a bit. So what I'll do now is I'll mix up some slurry and we will um, coat this. Now the refractory coating, if you don't know, just stops the sand coming into the pattern once the molten metal hits it and vaporizes it. So it lasts for a little while and then you're supposed to have it permeable so the gases that are trying to escape will actually escape out through the refractory coating rather than bubble back up through here. So while we'll get to and start mixing some up, we'll get this coated and, and um, let it start drying out and we'll move on to a few other things too. So what I'm doing now is mixing up my refractory. So I've used, I'm using um, Gyprock top coat. I don't know what, I'm, what are the Yanks call it? Dry, drywall, so the top coat, not your base coat, your actual top coat for your plastering. And a bit of water. And we're mixing. And we're making a mess. Might take it outside actually. I think that's a smart move. So we've had a few days duration pass uh, because we had to get on and uh, build this engine for a customer, another Celix Beach bike. And interestingly enough, I mean, I mean, look at the quality of this. It's like they didn't cast it in sand, they cast it in talcum powder. But if you can see there and up there, this has got similar gating to what uh, under here this head has as well so this is obviously the one I'm trying to replicate um, so may possibly be a Walsh head as well but anyway it's pretty thick through there so I had to make custom barrel studs but anyway it's a ripper it'll go it'll go pretty good I reckon Anyway, back onto this. So, uh, from earlier on, you would have seen I've changed the position of the sprue. So, uh, had people contact me and offer advice, which is just fantastic. And so, I decided to change it. So, we will cast it vertically, like that. And you can see I've got a bit of wire hanging out. That was just to provide support to the to the sprue. So uh, my apologies about not showing you how I dipped it and, and all that. It's called a flat battery on your camera. So, so we'll get that into the sand and we'll have a crack. Okay, it's about to get a little bit noisy here because I've got the air vibrator. So what I'm actually doing now is I'm setting our mould in the sand. So I'll just turn the vibrator on and just keep tipping sand in slowly so it all, but it all packs in nicely. Obviously I uh, can't talk while this thing's on so we'll get onto it. So there we have it, it's all packed. Justy's just going out to set up the forge now. Um, I've made green sand pourer and you can see the top of the foam down there which he's done a pretty good job so far we're about to find out how good a job it's <laughs> oh, got you. so I've got the crease puller loaded up um, just fired it up so in about 
25 minutes, half an hour or something, we'll uh, be ready to pour. Just go and put the lid on it. So we're all set up, ready to go. It's just a matter of waiting for that to melt down. I'm, I am remelting some of the stuff I've already done, which you, not really, you shouldn't really do. But I just want to see if this actually works. So I'll just wait for it to start cooking. So it didn't go too bad. Um, you saw the level drop out of the pourer once the foam really started to, to actually melt. So I wasn't quick enough to catch up onto that. Now we'll see how well we went in about half an hour's time, I suppose. So moment of truth, we'll have a look. No. It's close. Hmm. It's actually closer than I thought. It didn't quite fill the fence. didn't quite fill it. I don't know if the material wasn't hot enough or... Certainly flowed all right. Um, but yeah, we'll take it in the shed and we'll do a bit. So that's the back side of it. And as you can see, it looks, looks really good. I mean, have a look at the detail of the foam that's in the... It's in the sprue. Uh, just cut the feeder off and I'll try and get it back but I cannot see any bit of porosity in that so that's a good sign yeah bit of a shame but it's all right righty I, I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video we're on the road, we're well and truly there, but um, definitely time to buy a thermocouple. Uh, I still think the material was too cold for the poor. Um, to all my subscribers and all, the, all of you that have come on board recently and my old ones, thanks very much for your support. It's fantastic. So 
uh, from me at Oz Bannum's. I'll see you later.